Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a very interesting and powerful type slash concept in C Sharp and that is the result type. Now I say concept because it doesn't really exist as a concrete type in the BCL, it's not in .NET, but those of us who use it tend to add it either by writing it manually or introducing it through a NuGet package. Now I'm making this video because in my mediator series you've seen me use that result type quite a bit and many of you have asked in the comments, hey Nick, what is this result type? Why are you using it? Where is this coming from? Can you please explain it? So I'm going to take some time in this video and explain everything you need to know about this type and why I like it so much. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out my courses on dometrain.com. Alright, so let me show you what I have here. And I actually want to start by showing you that result type that I actually hand wrote in that mediator video. So the type in question is actually this one over here. Now just by looking at it you can see instantly some things. For example it is not actually a class it is a struct here and it has two generic type parameters one is the t value and the t error both of them can be here both of them are nullable and then we have two constructors one for the good or first value and one for the error value and then we have an is error or is success flag. And then over here we have a couple of implicit operators, which are very, very important for this concept. And then what you need to know is that we have a match method that will match either success or failure. Now let's see how something like this would be used. And I want to point out, this is a very naive way of implementing it. It's a very simplistic way. You can actually take it in many other places to make it more optimal for what you're doing. And we're going to see those in this video. But for now, what you need to know is that if, for example, I want to see how a movie is created in this uh, mediator handler, for example, it comes in here and this handler or any sort of method using the result type is a result of type movie, the good path, and validation failed, the error path, the bad path. And you have two paths. Now, this type technically is a union, and this type is also technically a monad. We're not going to explain what that is. You don't need to worry about it. The only thing you need to know, and the most important thing about all this, is that a result can only be its good state or its bad state. It cannot be both states or no state. So if we scroll down over here, you're going to see that we have this validation result and we send this uh, movie object to validate the movie because we have some rules. For example, a movie can have an empty title or it can be published into the future and so on. So if validation result comes back as invalid, we return a new validation failed class. Now, this is just a simple class, nothing special here. But how is this allowed if we actually return a result here? Same with the movie. We return the movie over here, not a result of movie. And here, not a result of validation failed. Well, this is where those implicit operators actually come in place into the picture. Because they will detect that this is, for example, the t-value, the happy path, and automatically convert that movie type here to the result of a movie and this validation fail type to that result of validation. So your code can still be clean and simple without much of the validation context in it and you can just keep it in the signature. Now, why is that good? Well, that's good because in scenarios like this where you have either success or failure in a very sort of binary way, what you can have when you're consuming the result is this match method. So I am matching over here that result type. And if I just show you the type explicitly, you're going to see that this is uh, the type of that result. And then we are matching it and we're returning that I action result. So we say, if you are in the happy path, if a movie was actually created, then take that movie object that you created and return it here. If not, if you have a failure, then map that to a bad request accordingly. Now, like I said, this is a very simplistic way of implementing it, but it will actually do the job perfectly for something like this. But what I want to do in this video is actually show you how we can introduce it and take a look at what's happening behind the scenes. And we're going to use a way more advanced result type in this video. In fact, I think the best result implementation you can have. So over here, what I have is the same sort of movie API context, but in this case, we don't have mediator. We just have a simple service. And when something goes wrong over here, in fact, let me find it with create and update. We just validate and throw an exception. And then this exception is caught in this validation exception middleware where we, we write that exception. So what's happening if I just quickly run this API and I go to Postman to file request, if I say go ahead and create Nick the Greek in 2024, which is a year 
after when I'm recording this, we're going to get an exception. And that exception is then translated into an appropriate contract. And that's all happening with exceptions as control flow, which is actually a quite bad way to do this. We don't want to do this. And I've actually talked in the past in really two videos why you don't want to do this. And I'm going to link it in the description down below. In that video, I do explain result as well. But here we're going to focus just on result, not so much on the exception side of things. Now, there's something very interesting I want to bring to your attention. Even though that result type doesn't natively exist in the BCL, in the .NET .next project on GitHub, where many of the things that might be coming are actually trialed, we did have a result implementation, which was pretty insane. I mean, I can make this a bit smaller, but there's quite a lot of stuff in here. It's almost 657 lines of code, and it's a very interesting implementation of that type. However, I'm not going to be using that because it's a bit too complicated for what we want to explain here and what I want to show. What I'm going to use instead is a library called language extensions. And the reason why I'm using that is because it has a very solid implementation of result and many other functional concepts, which I'd really like to talk about. And if you want me to talk about them, things like optional, for example, or sum or none or unit, then leave a comment down below. So now we have that new Git package installed. And the reason why I brought up that Microsoft thing is because there is sort of not really a need, but an interest in that concept because it can really simplify your code. So with that now installed, what I'm going to do is change this code, namely the create and the update endpoint to use that result type. The first thing I want to change is my interface over here. So create over here won't return movie, but it will return result of movie. And as you can see, there is no second type here. You only have one generic T type parameter in this implementation of result. We're going to explain why in a second, but now we have result here. And in update, we have result nullable. And it's nullable because update needs to update something. And if that something doesn't exist, then movie will be null. With those two things now in place, I'm going to go ahead and just update the update and the create endpoint over here. And what I'm going to do is change how we deal with this flow. The problem I have with this service and the way this code is written is that this service could be in the application layer or even deeper. And it will be really hard to know that the way this is designed is to throw an exception that eventually you have to catch. And if you want to use the same application layer in a CLI application that doesn't really have the same middleware functionality, it becomes very, very tricky to be consistent with the logic. The control flow is managed by exceptions and it really shouldn't because it makes it very hard to follow. Maybe in the context of an API, it is fine. But the moment you want to start reusing stuff, this just falls apart and it's very hard to make portable. So what I'm going to do instead is use the validate async method and get a validation result back. So I'm going to say validation result and I'll have a result. This way, I'm not getting an exception. And now what I can do is say that if validation result is invalid, so if it is not valid, then I'm going to create the error, which in this case is going to be the same validation exception that we would have thrown previously. And I'm going to pass down the errors in the constructor because that's what that validation exception actually expects. So that's absolutely fine. Same thing, but we do not throw the exception. We do not throw that error. What we're going to do instead is we're going to return it. So we're going to say return new result and pass the error here. So now if we take a look at the constructor or one of the constructors of this result type, it has one for exceptions. The exception is not thrown. It is passed in as this error value. And if you've used any other language that has a result type, this is all too familiar. So now that we've done this here, I'm going to go ahead and do it again in update. So same thing here as before. I'm going to go ahead, catch this and return it. This would be nullable movie. And that is it. Everything now works. But this is only half of the story because yes, now we don't throw those exceptions. We just return them as simple types but we need to do something with them. And this is where it becomes very interesting because like we said before, this result type can only be one of the two values, either the happy path or the unhappy path. And if I say result dot, I can't say give me success or give me failure. I can say things like map, match. I can say if fail, do something, if success, do something and so on. So what we want to do here is actually match it. And we want to match the happy path, the successful path and the failure or the error path. So both of them will actually return the same type. The type will be 
the I action result because that's what my API is expecting, but we're going to do it in two different ways. We're going to have the movie path, the happy path, the successful path here, and then we're going to have the error, the bad path over here. The successful path is just, hey, just go ahead and create the movie, and that is it. So we can reuse some of that. I'm going to get M here and use it here and here, and now the code just compiles. And then for the error, I just want to replicate the logic I had in the middleware, which is just hey, return this bad request validation sort of error. So all I want to say here is error.map to response. This will map it to the appropriate uh, contract response type, and I want to wrap all of that to a bad request. So now I have the exact same functionality, and in fact, I'm going to just take a breakpoint here, just quickly also rewrite this one over here to return the appropriate types. So update is also now rewritten to use the exact same logic, and I'm going to go ahead and just debug this code base and I'm going to go to Postman and fire that same request and see what we get. So request comes in, we have the movie, we go into the service, we're going to see that validation actually does fail. We're going to create that error object with all the errors. In this case, only one. We're going to go and return it and then we're going to match and map it because we are forced to capture and we're forced to deal with every single scenario of that result type and then we get the result back saying hey year of release must be equal or less than 2023 and that is it so now the code is simpler on the consuming side all we have is this result type over here we're matching that we say okay we have a good path and a bad path we are forced to deal with both of them and then we return appropriate types and responses for both of them. And even in the service, you're going to see exactly what's going on and what's being returned. Now, you might not like using the exception class to represent an error state, but this will actually make it very easy if you want to migrate from an exception focused sort of flow control to a result based flow control. So I understand why the decision was made to make this an option. If you don't want to use that, then what you can use instead is a library like Fluent Results, for example, where if I scroll down into a NuGet packet with 3 million downloads or, or so, it's a very popular library. And as you're going to see here, there's many options to deal with your own error states. We have error, list of errors. There's some really nice goodies here. It's a nice library. I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to check it out. But if you already have exceptions and you want to migrate, this approach with language extensions will make it easier for you, I think. Now, I want to take a look at the implementation of result just to see what's happening behind the scenes. So like the one I wrote before, this is a read-only struct. This is done to minimize allocations as much as possible. But this one also implements two interfaces, the I comparable and the I equitable, so you can compare and check equality on different result types. And then you have the state represented with um, a faulted or success flag. You have the A value, which is the happy path. And then you have the exception or the error. And then you have your two constructors for this union type where you have the success constructor where things are set, the value is set, an exception is null. And the failure or the faulted state where you have the state faulted and then exception be this and then the default value for the value. Then you have the exact same implicit operators as in the type that I showed you, but you also have this pure attribute which is used to signify that this method this operator these things over here which as you can see this pure method exists in basically all of them they're marked as pure because they do not mutate the state of anything really they just are consistently going to return the same value over and over again and then you have things like map async where you can actually map that state but still handle both of them uh, and you have things like other operators like bigger than smaller than smaller than equal and so on and then that compared to as well from that comparable interface. So it's a way more complete implementation, but the concept is still the same. You have this union that can only be one thing at a time, and we represent it that way. Now, if you don't have any sort of functional exposure at all, it can certainly look a bit weird to begin with, but the more you use it and the more you're forced to handle those scenarios, you're going to see that it actually forces you to write better code and more predictable code. So I personally quite like this approach. But now I want to know from you, have you used the result type and what do you think about it? Is it something you would use and replace, especially exception throwing with it or not? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe more, click the like, this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.